Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to do this arty double exposure thing. The technique I'm going to show you, I actually learned from a Photoshop magazine, but for the life of me, I cannot remember the name of the magazine, but I do know I have that magazine stored away somewhere in my house. I hope to find it, and if I do, in the description below this video, I'll have the name of the magazine and the issue this technique is in, because I want to give credit where credit is due. Now we're going to start out with the image of the model, and what we need to do is get a selection of the model. To do that, get a selection tool, any selection tool, doesn't matter. Hit the W key on your keyboard and you'll get a selection tool. In my case, it has the quick selection tool. But as I mentioned, it doesn't matter which selection tool it picked. Because in this case, our model is on this clean white background. So I could just go up to the top and click Select Subject. And what it will do, Photoshop will do its magic and get me a selection of the model all alone. Now what we do, need to do is just modify this selection slightly. Go up to Select and Mask. And what we'll do is we'll smooth it just a little bit, like two or three pixels. We'll feather it just a pixel. 1.1 is good. And then click OK. Now we're going to take the selection of the model and we're going to duplicate it. And to do that, hit Command-J on a Mac, Control-J on a PC. And what you just did is you have the model clipped out from the background. So what we'll do is we're going to take this model background layer. All right. And we're just going to toss that right in the garbage. And we have the layer of the model. I'll change it to model. And now I want, I want more space behind her head because this technique, I'm going to have those clouds flowing out from behind her head. So I'm going to get the crop tool, hit the C key on your keyboard for the crop tool. And if you have any numbers up here, just hit clear. And if you need a little more room, hit command minus to bring it down a little bit. And we'll just grab this handle over here and drag it this way. And maybe I'll just drag a little more. Now this is a rough, you know, uh, crop because we could, we'll do a final crop at the end. So just make it so you think it'll be okay and click the little check mark to commit to that crop. All right, now we have the model all clipped out on our own. We recropped everything so we have it the way we want it. Now we're going to get a new background layer and to start off with, we're just going to fill that background with white. And you're going to think, well, you're right back where you started. But no, the original background layer had her on it. This background layer is just going to be all white. Now to do that, go to this little circle at the bottom, click on there, go to the very top, click on solid color. Now we don't want black. I mentioned we want white. So just go right up to the top. The hex code for white is four Fs. Click OK. Now it's not a background layer yet, so we have to drag it down to the bottom, put it on the bottom. We're going to rename it background. And as I mentioned, it's going to be white temporarily. We'll change that um, in a bit. So we have the uh, model layer. Now, um, if I recall, uh, the technique that that magazine taught was to desaturate the layer. And I, I don't like desaturate. I like the color. So if you want to desaturate the layer of the model, at this point, hit, hit shift command U on your Mac or shift control U on a PC to just make it black and white. I'm not going to, as I mentioned. And I am now going to go to the mountain tab where the mountain is. It happens to be the Matterhorn. And we're going to get the move tool. The, the V key is the keyboard shortcut for the move tool. Click on the mountain, drag it up to the tab with the model, and just put it on there somewhere like that. We'll bring the opacity down to like 50% or so, so I could see the model. And I want to reposition this uh, so that it's somewhere where I like it. Now, I kind of like the clouds kind of emanating from the part of her hair right there. Now, the, for me, this lined up really nicely, but you may have to resize your mountain image. It may be uh, too small or too big, or maybe you're using trees or whatever you're using. You may need to resize it. If you do, hit Command or Control T to get transform and then you could grab a handle and you could resize it make it larger or smaller in my case I mentioned I don't need to do that so I'm just going to leave it all like that I think that looks fine so I'm going to bring the opacity uh, back up to 
Now I need to get my selection of the model back. To do that, go on your model layer and hold your command or control key in and click right on the model layer and you'll get your selection back. Then go up to the top layer where the mountain is and we're going to add a mask to this. Now just go down here and click on the mask icon and now you can see that we have a silhouette of our model and the mountain is there. Now at this point you may like this. A lot, I've seen a lot of people use this for whatever reason and you could use this for something but I want to continue on and show you some more arty things you could do with this. So what we need to do now is go to our model layer and we need to duplicate it but we need the duplicate to be on top. And the easiest way to do that is just hold the alter option key and click on that layer and just drag it to the very top. And now we have the model layer on the very top. Now what we're going to do with uh, this is I'm going to change the opacity down to around 50% uh, so we could see the mountains again. And we're going to change the blend mode to lighten like that. Then we're going to add a layer mask to this. So go down and just click on the mask icon so we now have a mask on there. Now, because it's a white mask, we're going to want to paint in black. So go over here to the, your color swatches. And make sure black is the foreground swatch. If it isn't, like it isn't for me, hit the X key on your keyboard. Now we're going to get a brush. And with our brush, I'll get a larger brush, hit the right bracket key. And I want to bring opacity down to like 30%-ish, somewhere in there. And what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be painting and I'll be darkening the mountain. So I'm going to bring out the mountain even more. So back here, kind of bring it in a little more. And I want it, make sure your brush too, click on your little brush and make sure, or brush attributes, and make sure hardness is all the way down. Uh, so you're getting a soft brush. And actually, maybe even bring opacity down a touch more. So we're going to kind of fade it in towards her face. All right, now that we've done that, go to the mask directly below. This is the mask that is on the mountain. And what we want to do is bring out her face more. So we're going to still paint in black. But you'll notice when I do this, it, it makes her face more prominent. I'm going to do that like that and like that. Chin or lips a little more prominent. There's no right or wrong way. Do it to whatever you feel looks right. And I think that um, that looks pretty good. Now what we need to do is on this mountain layer, we need to duplicate it. Just hit Command J on a Mac or Control J on a PC. Now... What you could do is you could just fill this mask on this new layer uh, to um, black. And to do that, you could just, because black is the foreground color over here, hold the Alt or Option key in and hit Delete, and it will fill black. I'm not going to do that only because I want to show you something. I'm going to take this mask and throw it right out. So I'll throw it right in the garbage can. And don't click Apply. Click just Delete. We want to delete it. And you'll see now the mountain is there without being masked out at all and you can see these clouds so what i want to do is i want these clouds to be coming out from the back of her head so that is what we're going to mask in so i'm going to bring the mask back and to do that i'm going to hold the alter option key when i click on the little mask icon because when i do that i'll get a black mask so i have my black mask because it's black i need to paint in white so i'm going to flop flip flop these colors by hitting the x key I have my brush active. I'll bring opacity up to make 44% and we'll start brushing in these clouds like this. Now don't worry about the end here. I, that's why we cropped roughly. We're going to recrop later to fix that. And I went a little bit too much here. So I'm going to hold uh, or hit X on my keyboard to switch to black and kind of make that a little more even there. And kind of like that, I think is pretty good. And then what I'm going to do is hit X again, and I'm going to bring the opacity down even more to like 15%. And I'll just, ooh, that's a little bit too much even. I'm going to hit Command Z to undo that. I'll bring the opacity even down to like 7%. And I just want to kind of bring a hint of those in there. Like that, all right? So that's not too bad, something like that. Now, 
what I want to do is I want to change the color of this background layer. To do that, go on the background layer itself. Now, double click not on the mask, on the actual background layer, which is to the left of the mask. Double click there. And when you do that, you'll get a color picker. And I'm going to pick the blue sky color, like right here. And you can see that it did. Now, it is a little bit too dark. So what I'm going to, for me at least, so I'm going to just brighten it up. I'm going to push it up like this, something like that. And we'll click OK. Now, we'll go back up to the top uh, layer. I'm going to get the uh, crop tool again. I'm going to hit the C key. And I'm going to fix our crop so it's a little better. Something like this. I'll bring this in like this. So it's a little more tighter. Something like that. All right. So now we have this kind of cropped image. And um, the last thing I might do is this is kind of optional too. And I can't even remember if this was even a uh, part of that uh, technique that was in the um, magazine. This is just something that I've learned from other things. Sometimes you could make it look a little softer, a little more dreamy looking, is if you uh, put a stamped layer on top of all these layers. So what it will do, it will take all these layers and stamp them together into one layer and put it on top. To do that, on a PC, make sure you're on the top layer, on a PC hit shift alt Control e as in Edward. On a Mac, shift option command E, and we have that stamped layer. Now, take this stamp layer, and you could change, um, or you could desaturate this by hitting Shift Command U on a Mac, Shift Control U on a PC. Now we have a black and white image, but we're going to take the opacity. First of all, well, we'll take the blend mode. I'm sorry, I'm getting so confusing because I'm going off script. Is I'm going to take the blend mode and I'll change it to like soft light. Now, if I actually, I kind of like overlay. See how overlay is making our skin look a little more porcelain. Kind of like that, so we could do that. Then you could take the opacity, and you can mess around with the opacity a little bit if you want, like that. And that's it. That's the technique. That's how you could create this double exposure arty thing in Photoshop. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>